Former President Trump faced the music at a campaign rally in Iowa Friday. Amid growing legal woes, the former president took the stage just as the walkout song playing in the background blared lyrics that his opponents hope foreshadow his legal fate. One could end up going to prison. One just might be president. So you couldn't make that out, or if you've been living under a rock and aren't familiar with that song, uh, that is Brooks and Dunn, only in America. And they're talking about all the things that can happen in this country, talking about someone who could go to prison, someone who could become president. Joining us now to discuss former Republican Congressman Charlie Dent and CNN political commentator and Democratic strategist Karen Finney. Karen, as you know, as I know, that Brooks and Dunn song is played at every single political rally. Yes. Uh, folks of both parties use that uh, to pump up the crowd. And we just don't know at this point if those lyrics were intentionally played <laughs> at that time or if it was just a coincidence. I mean, what do you make of that moment? Well, it, it, if anything, certainly the person who was in charge of production maybe should have paid a little closer attention to, to that. That's a little bit on the nose, just it's given everything that's yeah. going on. I'm just saying, you know, they could have skipped it forward or gone to a different part of the song. I, I would imagine, though, uh, within the Trump campaign today, someone is getting their head bit off, no question. That's it, right, because his <laughs> usual walk-up song, when he has control of the music, uh, is Lee Greenwood. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. No. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be careful. All right, this hour, Charlie, Trump is holding a rally in your home state of Pennsylvania. He, of course, lost that state in 2020. In your eyes, uh, what are his prospects there? Well, as long as he has this, th these uh, legal storm clouds over his head, I think he's got real problems. You know, I get it in the primary among the base. Uh, this is motivating a certain element of it, and he's certainly doing well in the polls. But among uh, the general electorate, particularly in a swing state like Pennsylvania, this is going to be devastating. In fact, the fa fact that the Trump is in Erie, Pennsylvania tonight is significant because Erie is one of two of six is one of two counties in Pennsylvania. There's 67 counties, but Erie and Northampton counties are the two counties that went for Barack Obama, Donald Trump, and then Joe Biden. These are truly swing counties. So he's there for a reason. Uh, but again, Trump's legal problems and his you know, never ending looking backwards and grievance politics about what happened in the 2020 election. I think are not going to help in these swing states and marginal congressional districts. It's a real problem for the party. They all know it. They want him. They want Trump to go away. But these leading contenders against him are afraid to say anything to him because they're fearful of antagonizing his base, other than maybe Chris Christie, Will Hurd, uh, uh, Tim Hutchinson, and a couple others. And Governor Ron DeSantis is facing facing backlash from some of his black uh, from black lawmakers in his party over his support for a, a new education guideline in Florida, specifically this requirement that students be taught that black people benefited from slavery. What do you make of this? You know, it was a real misstep uh, on the part of Ron DeSantis to double and triple down, and some in the Republican Party earlier in the week, even, you know, they were attacking Vice President Harris, even suggesting uh, that she was lying about the standards. Well, now, uh, as you see, I mean, as African Americans, I mean, there is something about the experience of slavery. You know, we don't need to rely on textbooks or experts. We have the, our own stories in our own families. So we know about the horrors uh, of slavery and, and what the outcome was. It does put the Republican Party, though, in a very complicated position because you now have conservative black uh, legislators in, in the crosshairs of um, Ron DeSantis at a moment when the Republican Party has been trying to make inroads with African Americans. And so how they're going to try to um, have it both ways, I think it's going to be interesting to watch. And I think it's another sign that Ron DeSantis just cannot win in a general election uh, with this kind of a message. And Charlie, one of the other black Republicans DeSantis has attacked, Senator Tim Scott, appears to be heating up in terms of the polls. I mean, his super PAC has brought in around $20 million, and some states poll, state polls have him gaining on DeSantis or even overtaking him for second place. Uh, DeSantis was once, of course, thought to be the anecdote to Trump. Now it looks like it could be Scott. Well, yeah, well, Tim Scott has a very aspirational, forward-looking message. He is kind of like the anti-Donald Trump and uh, Ron DeSantis in many ways, in that you know Scott is not talking about grievance and victimization. 
he's he's talking about the future. He's talking about what can happen, you know. And he's got a, this wonderful, optimistic message. Uh, he's a he's got a great personal story. I think people are responding to that. It's as simple as that. And again, you know, Ron DeSantis has made missteps, as Karen just said, uh, with the. Uh, you know, slavery and personal benefit in the, in the state uh, education guidelines is mean, ridiculous. Uh, you know, suggesting to appoint uh, uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. as the FDA uh, leader of the FDA or, or the Centers for Disease Control. I mean, these are these that's just crazy. I mean, so he's had these types of missteps in recent days, and I think Tim Scott is benefiting. You know, again with his personal story and a, and a very positive message. And Karen, President Biden publicly acknowledged his four-year-old granddaughter, Navy, for the first time. In a statement first reported by People magazine, he said, quote, our son, Hunter, and Navy's mother, London, are working together to foster a relationship that is in the best interests of their daughter, preserving her privacy as much as possible going forward. This is not a political issue. It's a family matter. If this isn't political, why has the White House been so reluctant to discuss this issue? This young lady is four years old. Well, I think they, they did make clear in this statement. I mean, look, a lot of us have uh, complicated family dynamics, and I certainly you know, don't know the machinations of their family. I was, most importantly, glad to see the president and first lady acknowledge uh, this child because she should be the most important thing in all of this. What I hope is that going forward, uh, our Republican colleagues will refrain from using her as a way to attack Biden. There has to be, even in this day and age when you can be, ha be facing multiple indictments and running for president, there still has to be something that is off limits. And I think four-year-old children, children in general, must be off limits. There are plenty of other attacks you can levy uh, on President Biden. Yeah, it doesn't seem though that it's the child herself. It's the four years it took them to acknowledge her. But Charlie, obviously the president's son, Hunter Biden, is going to be a prime fodder for Republicans. Do you think that issue resonates with voters? Yeah, I actually do, because look, uh, Hunter Biden is he's a bit of a train wreck. I think we have to acknowledge that. And I'm not I'm not going to suggest that the president, you know, did anything criminal. But when most Americans see that Hunter Biden, who acknowledged that he was on drugs, you know, gets this board position that pays close to $80,000 a month for a Ukrainian gas company, they raise their eyebrows and they think it smells. It smells of insider trading. It doesn't seem right. Same with these Chinese business dealings. So the whole thing smells bad. And of course, what happened in, in court in the courtroom the other day, uh, where the prosecution and Hunter's uh, lawyers couldn't come to an agreement on the agreements, uh, I think is also a problem. Uh, you know, because you know, is, is Hunter Biden potentially uh, culpable for some uh, Foreign Agents Registration Act violations that he could be charged for? I mean, so I think this story is not going away. It is a major problem uh, for the president. And, you know, I, and again, I think Republicans have to be careful not to overreach uh, because Charlie, if you look at the Biden family story in total, you, you look at the, the story in th the total, you'll see, you know, he lost his wife and, and daughter in a car accident decades ago, his son Bo to cancer. And so there's a lot of tragedy. And so I think a lot of voters will look at the Biden family in total and not just at Hunter's uh, many uh, shortcomings. I mean, I actually think people are looking at Hunter and recognizing, again, no one should be above the law, even the president's son. And he hasn't been. I mean, he has been going through a legal process. There has been four years of an investigation, which started under Trump. They've never been able to connect this uh, to the president, where you know he is going through the, the criminal process. And the other thing I would say that I, I think in this story is so many of us know or have relatives who uh, are dealing with addiction, and there is no one who will do more harm to that person than, than that individual. Um, and I'm not excusing any behavior that he may have engaged in while he was an addict, but I think a lot of people have empathy for the fact that you know, this is about a president and a, as, a, as a man, as a father, standing by his child, but having nothing to do with any of his business dealings.